In this episode, we are going to interpret the results of binary logistic regression analysis in Stata. At this point, I expect you to have gone through steps 1 up to 5. We have separate videos that have gone into the details of each of those steps. I highly recommend that you go and visit any of the videos for the step that you may not have gone through yet. Here is our hypothetical data set that we are going to use to run a binary logistic regression analysis and interpret the results. We have our outcome hypertension, those without hypertension coded 0 and those with hypertension coded 1. Then we have a numeric variable age and cholesterol. Then we have a sex, a binary categorical independent variable. So we want to use these three independent variables to predict whether someone has hypertension or doesn't have. To run a binary logistic regression in SATA, simply go to statistics, uh, binary outcomes, then logistic regression. In this dialog box, specify the dependent variable, which is hypertension. This should be strictly coded as 0 and 1. Then the independent variable, which is age and cholesterol. But we want to tell starter that this sex is categorical. So we shall use the three dots to tell starter that this is a factor variable. We specify it here and then we click add to variable list. I click OK. You will see that it has been added with an I dot before the variable name, which you could as well just as well type. We have an important tab that we want to look at, that is under reporting. When you're reporting uh, results of uh, logistic regression, you can either report them as odds ratios, which are the default, or you can report them as uh, estimated coefficients. So we are going to run both models and interpret both models. Let us first request for a model that estimates coefficients and submit. So this will be our model, but it is reporting coefficients for each of our variables. We also want to request a model that reports all these ratios, which is by default in starter, then submit. And here you will see that we have odds ratios. Regardless of which model you're using, the p-values are the same. So they are essentially the same models. Before we interpret those results, here are some two basics that we need to first understand so that we appreciate why the interpretation is the way it will be. One, we start with a linear regression model because this is like the foundation of regression. In linear regression, we have our outcome variable having a linear relationship with the predictors. So when we are interpreting the coefficients, the beta 1, beta 0, up to beta k, we are just simply saying it is the expected change in the outcome because there is a direct linear relationship. But when it comes to the logistic regression model, it is instead the natural log of odds of the outcome represented as log of p is equal to, it is the one having the linear relationship with the predictors. Meaning any interpretation that we are making in logistic regression model, it is the change in the log of odds of the outcome. Not directly that uh, it is the change in the outcome, no. It is a change in the log of odds of the outcome. If you're wondering what log of odds is, in binary logistic regression, we only have two possible outcomes. Either the event has happened or it does not happen. So we are predicting our outcome in terms of probabilities. So when we talk of odds, it is the same as probability of the event happening, maybe of someone having hypertension, over probability of someone not having hypertension. So we are looking at this expression is what we call the odds. So log odds. I know you may not be comfortable with the formulas, but what I want you to appreciate from these formulas is that when we are interpreting coefficients of logistic regression model, we are interpreting it in terms of change in uh, log odds of the outcome. 
So we are going to start by interpreting uh, the output of the model that is giving us coefficients. In our output, we have a number of observations, 150. Then we have the likelihood ratio chi-square test. This test is comparing a model with our variables versus a model without any of the variables and looks at is there a statistically significant improvement in the model when we bring in our variables. So a statistically significant p-value shows that uh, adding variables into our model has significantly improved it. We have an error squared value here, but uh, this should not be mistakenly uh, interpreted like the error squared in the linear regression model. Then below here we have a table having each of our independent variables and the coefficients. While interpreting these coefficients, I want us to remember our formula here. We are interpreting coefficients in terms of a change in the natural log of odds of the outcome. So let's start with the constant here down. The constant is the natural log of odds of outcome when all variables are equal to zero. When it comes to a numeric variable like h, this value of 0 0.052, it is simply a change in the log odds of having hypertension with the unit increase in xi standing for variable, while other variables are held constant and that variable h does not interact with any other variable in the model. Similar to the value for cholesterol, we could say this is the change in the natural log of odds of having hypertension uh, for every unit increase in the cholesterol levels, keeping other variables constant, and when cholesterol does not interact with any other variable in the model. We expect you to have checked for interaction in your model, because if there is interaction, uh, the interpretation is completely different. For categorical variables such as sex, you can see that for sex we have male and females, but what is indicated here is the value for male, meaning that males are being compared to females. So a value for males would be interpreted as um, the difference in log of odds of having hypertension between the males compared to people in another category, that's the females, while controlling for other variables. When the difference in codes is unit and sex does not interact with any other variable in the model. When we are interpreting the categorical variable, we have to put in some other extra condition uh, of having the difference between the way you coded your groups of that independent variable there should be a unit difference. By unit, for example, you have 0, 1, maybe 1, 2, or you have 3, 4, but you shouldn't code one of your categories as 0 and another one is 5. That is, the difference is not unit, and when we go into the calculations of the interpretation, you get a completely different result. That's why it is very important we emphasize uh, when the difference in the way you've coded your categories of that categorical variable a unit. So that's how we can interpret our logistic regression model when we have requested for coefficients. However, if we have requested for all these ratios, then the interpretation is going to be a little bit different. Still borrowing from the knowledge from the formulas that we've written for both the linear and logistic regression model, Previously, when we had coefficients and we are interpreting, say, for males, we are saying it is the difference in the log of odds of uh, one group compared to the other. So basically, we are subtracting uh, the log of odds of males minus the log of odds of having outcome for females. But mathematically, when you have log of A minus B, it's the same as log of A over B. So it's the same as log of odds of outcome in male over odds of outcome in female. And now this expression is a ratio. And this is now odds ratio. 
Therefore, interpreting our output of coefficients as a, a difference in log odds is the same as saying log of odds ratio. So when we have our output uh, having odds ratios, the interpretation is going to be a little bit different. For the um, constant, it is going to remain the same. So this is the natural log of odds of outcome when all variables are the same. This is not a ratio, that's why it is remaining as log of odds. But when it comes to a numeric variable like age, we are saying that value that you're seeing here for a numeric variable like age, it is the log of odds ratio of outcome for a unit increase in the variable age while other variables are held constant and age does not interact with any other variable in the model. So the value for cholesterol, this 1.013, is interpreted as the log of odds ratio for a unit increase in cholesterol levels while keeping other factors constant and when cholesterol levels are not interacting with any other variable into the mod in the model. For categorical variables like sex here, this value 3.08, we shall be saying this is the log of odds ratio for sex when other variables have been held constant and when the difference in codes of the variable is unit and that sex does not interact with any other variables in the model. Now that we've understood the mathematical bit, if we are to interpret uh, our logistic regression output in the applied uh, way, if we have an odds ratio of 1, it means um, there is no difference, whereas odds ratio of less than 1 shows uh, less likelihood. So for age, we would say that um, for every unit increase in age, there is a higher likelihood that someone has uh, hypertension similar to cholesterol increase in cholesterol levels results into higher likelihood of having hypertension for the categorical variable we would simply say we would simply say the males are about three times more likely to have uh, hypertension compared to females we have uh, p-values here that shows whether this uh, whether this variable is statistically significant and then the population 95% confidence interval. So that's how we interpret the results of logistic regression output when you do not have interaction terms. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss out any of our episodes. So next we are going to look at multinomial logistic regression. See you in the next episode.